Okay, if you've clicked on this video, I'm guessing that you want to know how to get the uh, serial monitor working on the AT Tiny uh, 85. Um, the, uh, the chip itself is a, a marvel of miniaturization, but of course, being so small, it won't have anything like a UART uh, chip on board. And uh, why would you want serial communication? Well, of course, it's an invaluable aid when you're developing and you want to debug your program, just a simple hello world and a sequence of code which you are hoping is ex executing, but you can't be sure. Uh, then printing something out to the screen, the value of a sensor, the value of a voltage level, some diagnostic information, all of that is, uh, is almost the common currency of programming, you know, to figure out where your program is going wrong. This, this debug, debug facility, a simple hello world debug facility, and it doesn't have it. Um, so uh, I, I needed one uh, for, for a project I'm working on, and yesterday, you, you get good days, you get bad days. Uh, yesterday was an atrocious day. I spent over two and a half hours trying to work out why this, I couldn't get this thing working. If, if, there was a, a, if there was a wrong way of doing it, I found it yesterday, uh, and, I just, and I invented a few more on the way. So this is for uh, you out there who've had similar problems, or if you're just starting out programming for the first time and want to know how to get the AT Tiny 85 giving you some diagnostic information. I'll do this from the ground up. I'll use just basic stuff that uh, most people will have in the Arduino environment. An Arduino Uno USB cable, uh, a breadboard. We'll, we'll use the Arduino as a, as a USP, so, uh, USB, an ISP. So we're going to need a 10 microfarad capacitor to disable the reset button uh, when uh, it loads through to the AT Tiny 95. It's also going to be useful to have an LED with um, a resistor as well. And why? Well, when you're debugging this code as you put it in, hopefully it'll work first time, but if it doesn't, you'd like to know that the code that is writing out to the serial monitor is actually being executed, and a blip to an LED in that sequence will tell you the code is in fact running. So that, that's useful, uh, of course, to be replaced by the serial monitor when we get it running. You're going to need some DuPont cables as well. Is that it? I think that's it. Right. So the first thing to do, as I said this is ground up, for which I make no apologies, is to get the Ar Arduino IDE installed. Uh, so let's get that cracking, Arduino IDE. There it is. And the Windows installer we'll go for. And yes, I've donated before, I'm not going to donate again. Um, oh, I am a cheapskate, and I'm not a cheapskate. Yes, I am a cheapskate, but I'm not paying twice for something. So let's create a... Arduino IDE folder and download that. And while that's downloading, just a couple of gotchas on this thing. When it does install, uh, the only thing you really need to accept when you're installing it for the first time is the uh, uh, USB drive, are the USB drivers. Um, all the other things you can be a bit circumspect about. Uh, terms and conditions, but make sure you take the USB driver. Let's see what this comes up with. The other thing, which is a bit, bit of a, a nuisance, is it's not always clear, if you've got a lot of COM ports, which COM port your device is connected to. You have to do a bit of hunt and peck. Fortunately, I know this machine like the back of my hand. I use lots of USB intelligent devices, uh, data load gathering monitors for battery performance, voltage, current sensors, so I'm fairly familiar with the, the comms port in here. Do I want Adafruit? No, I don't. I don't want SparkFun either. Uh, SparkFun. Spark take all the fun out of programming. Um, Arduino USB driver. Yes, I do want that. So there we go. Is that working? Setting up. Installation. Okay. Right, completed. Um, let's start up the... Uh, let's get rid of this thing. Let's start up the Arduino IDE. Um, let's put the host end in. Uh, plug this in. Hopefully, it will recognise it. It didn't install the drivers. Right. Let's test that the Blink program is working. Uh, check we've got the right board. Uno. Com port. No, it's not com port two. It'll be com port thirteen. I think that one is. Let me just switch it. I think that's right. And let's give it a, a compile and upload. Hey, great. And yeah, we have a blinking LED. 
I think there's a blink sketch on there already, actually. Um, okay, right, the next thing to do, yes, we need to configure the IDE for the um, ATtiny environment. So go to uh, Preferences, uh, where was I? Was it Tools Preferences? No, it was File uh, Preferences, and go down to the Board Manager URL, it's just a JSON file, uh, which points to the uh, Board Manager packages. So there it has been added to the list of our packages. We've got to install it. So I think we go to Board Manager up here and go to the bottom and hopefully there it is, AT Tiny. Uh, and the latest version, I think, I need to drop down there to go to early versions, install and it's installed. Great. And now if we go to Tools, we can see uh, the Board Manager for the Arduino down there. And it's two groups the X5s and the X4s, so the 25, 45, 85, 24, 44, 84, and it's the 85 we're looking for. We don't want that just yet though. Uh, what we're going to have to do is go back to the UNO board, and because we're going to uh, be using the UNO as an in-systems program, we need to go to the examples list and select Arduino as an ISP and we want to load that into the Arduino. Let's do that now. Oh, wait a minute, that's wrong. I've just made a mistake there. Uh, the program is a the AVR ISP. We want our Arduino as ISP. Uh, that's a common mistake in trying to get this, uh, this thing working. So now we've got uh, ISP and Arduino as ISP. We'll recompile and re-upload. But that is certainly one of the mistakes I made yesterday. Um, okay, so that that's looking good. Now, before I forget, I'm going to uh, pop in the um, capacitor on the positive the positive end of the capacitor and the reset pin, and the negative to ground. That just has to be in there before we upload into code into the. Arduino. Right, now let me put the Arduino into the breadboard. Right, this goes in, this pin's not look terribly straight. It's a new pack of 80 tiny 85s and the pins for some reason are all a bit misaligned. I wonder if it's second hand stuff. Okay, so pin 1 is the one with the dot on it, physical pin 1, and like most ICs it goes round in anti-clockwise, pin 1, pin 2, physical pin 3, pin 4, across the chip to pin 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now those don't tie up those numbers with the 80 tiny reference uh, pins in the programming uh, code. Uh, pin 1, physical pin 1 is uh, 80 tiny pin 5, physical pin, pin 2 as you can see on the screen now is pin 3, pin th physical pin 3 is, is, is actually 80 tiny pin 4. Uh, physical pin 5 is pin 0, physical pin 6 is P1, physical pin 7 is P2, with physical pins 4 and 8 being ground on BCC. So we can start to wire this up now uh, for, for programming as, a, as an ISP. And we've got three, we've got, we've got, um, first thing we do, we've got to get the reset button. And the reset button, the reset line goes from pin 10 uh, on the UNO to uh, pin 1 on the 80 tiny 85. That's the reset button that says, right, get yourself into taking a new program mode. And then the, the uh, lines uh, that we have to transmit the data, it's synchronous communication on SPI. So we have uh, 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 MOSI and MISO, uh, master in, slave out, master out, slave in. And it also has a clock line as well. Synchronous data requires, you know, TX and RX, but it also requires an embedded clock as well. So we we've got uh, we've got um, the um, we've got the MOSI line, which goes to uh, pin 11 on the uh, Arduino for the ISP. Uh, that goes to physical pin 5 on the. Um, <clears throat> uh, 80, let's move this over a bit. Give me a bit of space. Uh, the reason being I'm going to have to put in a, an LED at some point. And uh, this green cable is MISO, that goes to physical pin 12. And then we've got the clock, which is pin 13 on the uh, UNO, and that goes to pin uh, 7. Now we don't have uh, VCC and ground connected yet, we should do that now. 
So a red one and a black one, just to keep it uh, nice and simple. So the black one there on VCC, physical pin 4, just put this into the ground next to the negative of the capacitor, where it's also connected to the ground. Excellent. And then we've got pin 5 up here, next to the positive of the capacitor, and that goes into pin 8, the last pin up here. Excellent. So now, uh, we've got the ISP in here, we've got uh, this coded, this connected ready for um, our code. So let's get cracking on coding. Um, it's a very short program. Uh, I'm going to try and type it in from scratch. Uh, I'll probably make some mistakes, so shout out if you see me doing something wrong. Um, take that down a peg or two. Right, so first thing we need to do is to include, hash include, the important code called software serial header file. That's the, uh, that's the stuff that does the magic. Uh, then we're going to have to uh, create an instance of that, so we software serial, you call it anything you want, I'm going to call it monitor, that's how I think of it, monitor, because it's both ways, but for the purpose of this let's call it monitor, and then you have your RX pin setting and your TX pin setting, I could define, you know, RX as pin 5 and TX as pin 4, but I'm just going to use the pin numbers here, pin 5, pin 4, don't forget these are 80 tiny pin numbers, so uh, 80 tiny uh, pin 5, so, yeah 80 tiny pin 5 is actually physical pin 1 and 80 tiny pin 4 is physical pin 3. So now uh, we have to go in and um, uh, do our pin, pin modes. We're, we're going to use uh, an LED and I'm going to put that on pin 0. Get a bit of a space under that, make it look a bit neater. Pin mode uh, zero, and that's output as an LED. I'll connect the LED later on. Um, copy this, and we need one, two more pin mode because pin far four uh, is TX, so pin four is output, and pin five is RX, and that'll be input. Now one of the things we also must do here in the setup is we must tell Software Serial what our board rate is and to do that we, we, we use our name monitor and begin which will set up the uh, control blocks for uh, sending and receiving data and tell it we want 9600. I think there are other variables we can put in here, you know, number of stop bits and uh, whether you want odd or even or no parity, but most communications these days are just, you know, 8 bits. Uh, uh, no parity and one stop bit. Why on earth we ever needed more than any stop bits on, on, on this communication is beyond me. If you know the answer to that, let me know. Start bit, I understand. And once you tell it it's 8 bits, it knows exactly when it's ending, so I'm not sure what the, what the, what the story is with what happened. Oh, sorry about that, the battery just died on the phone. Uh, where were we? Okay, um, yeah, stop bits, no idea. Um, pin mode 5 input, so we've got the pin mode set up and that should uh, be complete for the setup code. Good. Let's just take this down so you can see more of the code. And the main loop over here, well the first thing I want to do is I want to stick the, uh, um, the uh, LED on, so the digital right, again I could have called this pin you know, cinnamon bit to LED, but digital right zero comma high. And then we want to use our instance of software serial, which is called, which I call monitor, to print a line uh, and we want to say LED on. Hurrah! Uh, then we want to delay for a, a second, so we can see that LED for a second. And then we want to copy these lines above, or well, we can top, copy all of these lines actually. You can get clever with uh, using flash memory for some of the, the text in here. Don't forget you've only got 8K to play with, so 
uh, code choose it up, and I could do an awful lot of stuff with um, Boolean here to to uh, to toggle uh, these settings. But for the sake of clarity, we'll keep it as it is. So digital right zero, low. Didn't like that album by Bowie. It's very popular though. And digital and LED off. Okay, and we want a delay so we get the off uh, for a full second, and that's it. Right, so now we have uh, the ISP in the UNO, we've got the capacitor, we've got the wiring set up to power the 80x85, we've got the, the MISO, the MISO, the clock and the reset uh, line connected. Um, all we need to do now is uh, save this, um, save as, right, let's call it uh, my sketches. And we'll call it um, 85 monitor. It should create the uh, folders for it. Right, so there we go. Let's just see that compile. Oh, wait a minute. We have, let's get the board right first. It's 80 tiny 85 with the processor 80 tiny 85. Let's select that. Make sure. Okay, 85. And that's on 1 megahertz. Right, what we'll do is we'll switch that to 8 megahertz. Uh, we've got the programmer set up. Let's just burn a bootloader to diffuse that 8 megahertz into the chip. So burn bootloader. Oh look, processor 80 tiny 85 nearly made a mistake. Okay, there we go, 85 now instead of 25. Right, let's burn bootloader. May take a minute. Done burning bootloader. Hooray! Well, let's compile this code. Any mistakes in it? Well, probably plenty. Yeah, looks good, looks good. Let's check that. Yep, we're looking good. Right, so let's upload this. We're good to go. Yes, we've got the ISP loaded, we've got the capacitor in, we've got the board set correctly. And these are the things I was making mistakes with yesterday. I was rushing around and forgetting to switch it back to the AT Tiny. And when I was uploading uh, code to the UNO, so we're getting switched back to the UNO, I was forgetting to remove the capacitor. You need to be on top of all that stuff. So here we go, we're going to compile the sketch and we're going to upload it. Now, in the hope in the hope that this uh, is working, is it up uploaded? It's done uploading, right. So I'm going to, remember it was physical pin 5 is the one second on, one second off. I suppose I could just put a multimeter on here. And that's another thing, it might help to have a multimeter handy if, uh, well anyway, when you're programming these things. Um, this is a 220k resistor, that's in. So that just uh, limits the current to this thing and we need to... Um, get the negative pin into the negative connection on which is physical pin 4 so that's positive there and negative in there and this should be flashing oh what's going on there it looks all right to me but then again everything yesterday looked all right to me hold the phone all right <laughs> LED failed. I mean, what are the chances of that? Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm surprised this didn't happen yesterday to thwart my efforts. So there we go. We've got. It was working all along. Um, yeah, who'd have thought it? Anyway, so now we know the code. Uh, monitor print line LED on is is actually executing. What we need to do now is configure the RX and TX ports and connect them to the RX and TX on the UNO board. Um, now, it's not as straightforward as it would seem. If we plug those in now, I can guarantee you we'll get nothing, nada, rien. Uh, the RX port will make green, which is pin, physical pin 1, and the uh, TX port will make blue. Uh, so the RX is is green. We'll plug that into RX. We, only, we don't really need the TX, but we'll plug them both in. But I can show you 
there'll be nothing oh, don't don't prove me wrong there'll be nothing on the serial monitor yeah nothing now a uh, number of reasons for this but the most common uh, in my experience is that we still got the ISP code loaded into the UNO so we need to do three things firstly disconnect these TX and RX because if we load code into the UNO while those are, are attached it fails we need to uh, take out the uh, capacitor uh, that stops the uh, UNO from resetting to accept new code and now we need to load a pretty uh, useless sketch, uh, a do-nothing sketch. There's one in the examples in, in basics and that is bare minimum, bare necessities. And we need to get the board set correctly because the last time we uploaded software we uploaded it to the 85. Uh, so now we get it back to Uno. And these were part and part of the mistakes I was making yesterday. I kept forgetting to take the capacitor out. I forget to put, it, put the capacitor back in and I left the TX and RX lines attached when I shouldn't have done. I forgot to reset the boards. So now we've got the capacitor out. We've got the TX and RX lines out of the Uno. We've got the board set correctly. We upload bare minimum. <clears throat> there we go. And if we put uh, RX and TX back in, now we've got LED on and LED off. Hey presto, now wasn't that worth the wait? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm off to watch England beat uh, 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 Belgium now, and even if they don't win, I'll still be happy and celebrate because we're going through to the next round. If you thought, found that useful, um, give us a thumbs up. All the best. Cheers. Bye.